Great to have you with us. Now, Calm has returned to Alajo following yesterday's shooting incident, which left one person injured. Police have arrested three persons in connection with the shootout on Tuesday in Accra. The incident is the third in weeks after similar ones at Aveno and La Paz. The, it's the injured 32-year-old Yaobwedi, who has operated who was operated on yesterday as the Accra Regional Hospital, is in a stable condition. Just in case you missed it, here's what happened on Tuesday. As you just heard from uh, Mr. Kwesifori, uh, MFR, the police have not done. So tell us what you know. Yeah, minimum balance. Yeah, yeah, you may be able to try. And then who say car, red one be able to park it. So me, who can do Nay, who say, Nani Patri? Yes, in the Patri, Nana, Tikan, Musuyan, you want. So now I'm Bema, you're so many riot in inside. Yes, I said, Sprint a bee bar or bought a bang. Yes, to you near Saka, Red Rano, Esiquan. To not almost a shell, nor park a car, Red Rano. You who nor park a car, Red Rano. To your shell, now, Mamba could be any or Bano, Ekasaka, as I say. Baby, I'll. Uh, my parking car and yet, my parking car and yet, no movie, no be boys. Now we are training on the car and ah, back up, be here now on any and I'm a car, say, you be here or yard the pa, and come on, funny car, say, oh, now get the guy, ah, money treat to now boy, you to to all three to all, our boy, when he shoot first one, no, Nensa see a two so. Or they baffom no, or they baffom no, and a bow bonnet and a bow boy no. A bow boy no, or no more rassy boy in the course, but not trans now, many percent or only boy in the court, and I can say there be into no or no ginana or moonfak boy and fak half of Ronco. So that is the situation here at Alahayad, a mechanic workshop at Alajo. At about 4 p.m., we had some gunshot incident here and the police have acted swiftly. The perpetrator is now at the Tesano police station helping with investigations. So that was on Tuesday. Let's go live to the scene to find out what has transpired since then. Joy News' is Maxwell Agbagba is there and he has joined us on phone. Maxwell, tell us what the community looks like this morning. Well, uh, Daniel, we just left there. We actually just left there um, some minutes ago. Well, um, Calm has returned to the area. Well, the area we're talking about, um, the Allah Yard, it's um, actually uh, a place where it's a garage. So if you go in there, there are about um, 300 men who actually work there as um, mechanics. And they work from different, different you know, shops. They tell me um, that sometime yesterday, as you already um, stated, the altercation started uh, when a man who was also coming to the garage to service his vehicle parked in the middle of the road. In fact, when you go there, there's a thoroughfare that runs through uh, um, the, the yard itself. He parked somewhere in the middle of the road, and he was told by one of um, the workers there to park properly. That, we understand, resulted... Um, in the altercation um, and then ended up in some gunshots being fired by, uh, what do you call it, um, the suspect who is currently, you're told, in the custody of the Tessan uh, police. Now, today, when you go there, calm has returned. In fact, uh, at the time that we were there, I did, not see any, any, I did not see any police officer on the ground. The workers were actually going about their normal duties, doing their work. Um, some of them were actually relaxing. I uh, had a spot very close to the place called the Best Mass Spot. So some of them were actually inside the drinking bar, others were outside the drinking bar. And you usually find them in groups of two or three um, having discussions about um, what um, actually um, happened yesterday. Maxwell, had, yeah, Maxwell what are these discussions they've been having? 
Well, some of them have been telling me that um, they're praying um, that um, the, their colleague would actually get well soon and then return um, to work. There's, um, yesterday, this version actually of the story actually did not uh, really uh, come out. And today, one of the gentlemen that I had interaction with actually told me that um, the bullet uh, hit a bystander. So the two men who were actually involved in the altercation, the bullet from the suspect did not hit the other man who was engaged in the you know, misunderstanding with the suspect. It actually hit a bystander. From um, the narration that I got this morning, uh, I'm told that um, the suspect actually fired two warning shots into the air. Now, the third one, he was just about to fire the third one, but he was bringing his side arm down, but his hand was actually on the trigger. So he mistakenly fired into the bystander who was standing very close to a Toyota Cola um, vehicle parked at the garage. There was at a point that the bullet actually, um, we hear, penetrated the abdomen of the bystander. And today, um, the, gentleman that I had, the gentleman that I had interaction with um, at the place actually showed me um, a, you know, a hole that had perforated um, the Toyota Cola that was back there you know, at the garage. So we saw the hole there, the mark there, and that, we are told, it's, um, uh, was caused by the bullet that was fired from you know, the gun Maxwell. by you know, the suspect. Right, Maxwell, apart from the bullet hole that was in the, in the car, we saw yeah. another very damaged car yesterday from Alajo. Mm. Is that yeah. damage related to this incident? No, that's a different car. That car you're talking about had its uh, windscreens, its windows, you know, smashed uh, by the workers um, at the garage. That vehicle has been sold to um, the Tesla police station right now. This other vehicle I'm talking about uh, was actually affected because mm. the bystander who was hit by the bullet, you know, from the suspect, you know, uh, um, the bullet actually hit the vehicle. The bystander was standing okay. very close to that particular vehicle. So from the narration uh, from this gentleman who works at the Alaha, you know, uh, garage, the bullet penetrated uh, the abdomen of this bystander and then hit the, what do you call it, um, the Toyota Cola vehicle that was out there at the garage. Right. Uh, are the residents there expressing any fear over insecurity since yesterday's incident? Well, they thought um, from my interaction with them, um, they feel secure, even though um, police officers, you know, are not, on the, uh, are not you know, on the ground. Um, they tell me that they do not fear of any reprisal because uh, they think that what happened actually um, happened mistakenly. That is the narration that, uh, you know, that's the indication that I got from the mm. gentleman that um, I spoke to. So they don't fear that there will be any um, reprisals. And I'm sure uh, police also, uh, from their own intelligence, uh, also deem it, you know, not really necessary uh, to be there on the ground today. So all is calm. The workers are going about um, their duty today. Right. Thank you very much, Maxwell Agbagba, for that report. Maxwell was coming to us live from Alajo, where there was an, a shooting incident on Tuesday. <laughs>Welcome back, and let's go take you back to that area story of that shooting at Alajo. Now, if you remember, we said that this is the third shooting incident in a matter of three weeks. We had one at Aveno, we had one at La Paz, and we had one uh, just on Tuesday at Alajo. We've been joined in the studios by representative of the Small Arms Commission, Johnson Asantichu. We want to look at what this means about the proliferation of small arms in the country. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, the, what happened at Alajo typifies the problem we have. This is someone who just parks his car in the middle of the road. He's questioned by someone, and he takes out a gun to start shooting warning shots. Um, what does this say about the fight we are waging against small arms? Thank you very much, and uh, like I said, good morning to your viewers. Um, this purely be seen as a criminal act and, and an act of criminality by, by an individual who wields the weapon. We need to look at the circumstances and ask a few questions. First of all, is it a legally registered weapon? If it is, um, he still has committed an offense because uh, there is no sense of he being under attack. 
And so using the gun, uh, the security agencies will tell you that he's using disproportionate force in that uh, regard. And so we need to look at the circumstances under which that weapon was used. But of course, it also tells us about uh, the level of people's understanding in terms of having weapons. It could be that this individual, you know, has this weapon legally with him, but is that the essence? Was mm -hmm. that the usage? Was he under any form of uh, attack? Or was there any provocation that warranted that he should use his weapon in that manner? And so um, people should not just be in a hurry to even have the weapons legally, but you need to understand uh, when to use the weapons mm. and the consequences that come with it. Okay. Is it when you use... Uh, before we go ahead into people acquiring weapons, mm. um, I don't want us to limit ourselves to Alajo only. Yeah. Um, in La Paz, it was an armed robber, basically, who had a gun and he shot a police officer. In Aveno, it was, you know, a community clash in where a, a gun came out. And in this case, it is somebody who had an argument with someone over a parking space. I'm reminded of this popular highlight musician, G-Man, mm. who had an argument with a taxi driver, mm. and he shot the taxi yeah. driver to death. Th I'm asking, if someone is even going to legally acquire a gun, because we don't know if any of these persons acquired them legally or illegally, are these three persons gone under, taken under any sort of screening to find out if they have the sort of temperament to carry a firearm that can kill somebody, and they won't use it, you know, indiscriminately? All right, thank you very much. Um, in terms of screening, yes because uh, before you acquire the weapon, the law is that you must be somebody of sound mind. And so that's also presupposed that you need to go through uh, certain routine checks by the police in terms of background check, your temperament, everything, before you are given the, the weapon. Are that these is, checks done? That, they, are, they are done. But that is when the person has gone through the legal process of acquiring the weapon. What if the person has acquired the weapon illegally? In that case, there is no uh, search criteria for this person because mm. he has just acquired the weapon by whatever means he has acquired it and he's using it the way he has to use it. But the question you ask, go beyond the screening. There is the need for some level of training and education, which currently the law doesn't provide for. And that is where we come in and say, look, we need to review the legislations. The law allows people to acquire weapons, but it doesn't allow them to train on those weapons. So people acquire weapons, and it becomes a danger not just to them, but to other people. Because just acquiring the weapon and the police screening your background and giving you the weapon is not enough. You but need to I, go through I, I, a certain I, regime. Just if I could finish. Mm. The individual needs to go through a certain regime that will tell him or her, when, how to use that weapon. As it is, if I just check your background and you pass per whatever criteria that you don't have any history of violence, you know, you are not a temperamental person and all that, the police will have no reason to deny you. So, they will so, give so, you so, the so weapon how, all how right. For instance, how, for instance, are these checks done? Um, what, is the, what is an average individual taken through before he can illegally acquire a weapon? Um, I may not be able to tell you everything because some of those things are also limited to the security because not everything they mm. want to tell you. And so sometimes they even come to your vicinity where you live. I mean, you wouldn't know that these background checks are done of you. People are questioning about you and, and then all that before they give you the, the permits. And so, uh, but I'm also mm. ruling out because the center is not only one place where the... Uh, weapons are issued and so there could be situations where some individuals agency, will not take the pain mm. to go through this the way we expect them to okay. and so that possibility is there that they would not go through the, uh, the, through the rigorous checks, checks in, in, before, in before. So, so that's, I wouldn't, that, that, that's a very dangerous recipe I, I wouldn't rule that out like I'm saying it's a human institution uh, you are talking about how many police stations dotted across the country with firearm officers who are supposed to do these background checks. And so you cannot say for certain that everybody is doing that 100%. Mm. There could be instances where people may not do that. And of course, that could also be mm. the reason why we have this. But the, major, the bigger question was that if people are allowed to train on their weapons, if people are taken through a certain regiment of when, how, to use the weapon. This may not occur. Exactly. We okay. will be limiting that, that, that this. Is the, that is the legal yeah. aspect. Mm. Coming to the illegal aspects where people own guns illegally, um, the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry has stated 
that 98% of illegally acquired guns mm. are locally manufactured. Right. That means that any person can go to a blacksmith who can make a gun and just acquire a weapon like that. How are we making sure that this does not happen? Thank you. That's, that's a, very, a very difficult one in terms of uh, looking at it per local manufacturer. Now, this is a business that predates independence. Mm. And uh, people were, were contracted, so to speak, by our local chiefs who then were, you know, in, in terms of local governance, were the heads of governance in the various local institutions, who, you know, contracted these people to manufacture weapons for them for warfare, for defense, and all that. So that kind of skill has, you know, been passed on. From generation to exactly. generation. Now, it's gone underground. And it's becoming difficult for you to, you know, uh, uh, on earth where these people are applying their trade. Now, thankfully, at the Small Arms Commission, what we have done now is to put these people together region by region. Which uh, people? The, uh, the blacksmith. The blacksmith. At least those we can identify and those who are willing to come forward. And, you know, forming associations for them or helping them form associations. At least we know that of Ashanti region, and the northern region who have been registered you know as a legal entity and trying to see how we can you know redevelop and and redirect their skill mm. into some other things because look we have used the law used the policing system before independence so now we've not been able to deal with it and so we feel that let's look at it from another dimension let's try something else it had work in other areas that work in other circumstances will it be possible for us to see how we can redirect and, and, and redevelop their skills into doing some other things that will not impact negatively on our security, but impact positively on our economy. When did this start? Um, the process started around 2011. We've gone... Of registering blacksmiths? Uh, yes, not necessarily registering, but putting them together as association. Mm. And so you could extend it that way. And so there is a vibrant one in Ashanti region and then the northern region, especially Tamale and Yendi. Those are places you could say we have. So um, we'll be embarking on the next leg of it and ensuring that you know, other regions are brought together, uh, ensuring that there are uh, skill development centers in all mm. the regions. And so we want to see how best we can partner with them and get them some training, some equipment mm. where you know, mm. they can properly manufacture. Believe you me, things that we are importing in this country mm -hmm. are things that we can redirect their skill to manufacture to, manufacture. to help us conserve right. you know, our foreign currency mm. instead of using it to import you know, uh, metal tables and mm. things that we could do here. Right, but from 2011 to 2017, that is six years. In the past few weeks, we are seeing a lot of gun-related violence out there. In the Ashanti region, for instance, well, that shooting incident was involving a, a policeman shooting an illegal miner, but the police say that they had warning shots from the illegal miners, meaning they also had guns. Mm. Would you say that from 2011 to now, this process has been effective? Well, um, the background you give would probably not allow me to answer the question the way you put it, because you want also to look at um, the, the demand factors of, of weapons, and illegal mining is one of them. Now, as to whether that weapon is a locally manufactured weapon that was fired would be a difficult thing. I quite remember your own investigation from one of your reporters in Kumasi that indicated that people were acquiring pump action in part of central and western region, you know, which we followed closely. Mm. Now, those weapons were not locally manufactured. I, I, I would not like us to limit it to that one because I did give examples of what has been happening in the past exactly. few weeks. Yes. So, right? so the question is, are, are these methods, you know, effective in your view? Well, in our view, yes, also because um, we need uh, to look at it from a holistic perspective. Now, you need to look at it from the border control direction. Mm. You need to look at it from equipping the security agencies. That's why I said if you limit it to local manufacturer, then we will not be making okay. it heavy. So let's broaden the scope. Now, weapons come... So uh, I'm sorry, but we would have to end it here because of time. Right. Um, um, so in, in a word, you would say it's been effective so far? Um, we are doing our best. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Thank, Thank you for having me. For your time.